to me, it was, it was just a, a, a big black eye uh, uh, in society. Because of that, you know, a lot of the Mexican Americans, they, they, they said, hey, forget the Dodgers, we're done. We're done with it. Fernando Valenzuela was born in Mexico, but his story is forever linked to the land upon which Dodger Stadium sits, Chavez Ravine. Pre-stadium, the ravine was populated with 1,800 mostly Latino families in three rural neighborhoods, La Loma, Bishop, and Palo Verde, just an eyelash from rapidly urbanizing downtown LA. But in 1950, the city got caught up in the national public housing craze. It acquired Chavez Ravine land by eminent domain and forced residents to sell their property, often below market value. Those who didn't want to leave were pushed out against their will. Chavez Ravine was uh, 300 acres of kind of like country living, very rural. There were dirt roads. They had their own school. They had their own grocery store. They had their own church. It was their own happy poor man Shangri-La there. The people just loved living there. We had relatives that lived in Palo Verde, in the Chavez Ravine area. You reach a certain point over a, a a CIMA, we call it, over an outlook point, you could see downtown LA. You could actually see them when they were building the Pasadena Freeway. And all of a sudden, they get a letter. Hey, everybody has got to move out. We want to do LA uh, public housing. Housing Authority wants to come in and take over. You know, everybody, the outside people decided that Chavez Ravine was a, a slum. It was a blight to society and uh, they decided that for the people. It became the object of um, folks that worked at the LA City Housing Authority for a, uh, a swell place for public housing. Fantastical kind of communal living and high rises and modernistic designs. There was a six or $7,000 check for your home if you were the owner of it and for some, like the Arechiga family, there was just no way, no no rhyme, no reason to be moved. They would have to be removed, kicking and screaming, and by God, that, that would happen on national television. They bulldozed all their houses. It, it, to me, it was, a, it was a shame. When I was growing up, I had a very def definitive connection of what the history of Chavez Ravine was. You know, it's very much embedded in the Chicano psyche. That kind of tormented, you know, relationship of land and place. You have relatives who live here, right? Um, in the ravine still. Most of the families were Spanish speaking and they didn't have an understanding of what eminent domain was. And of course, everybody told them it was for the better good of public housing and so on. I had uh, three staff people that had lived in, in Chavez Ravine. One who was still extremely bitter about what happened during that time, who still would not go to a game because of Chavez Ravine. By the mid 50s, a changing political climate in LA put the kibosh on the public housing idea. But it was too late for the families forced to relocate. Evictions continued as the land was designated by the local government for public use. Then, in 1957, when Brooklyn Dodgers owner Walter O'Malley wanted to move his team, he made a deal with the city to develop the ravine as the Dodgers' new home. The Dodgers came to town the following year, playing their first four seasons in the cavernous LA Memorial Coliseum. The last residents of Chavez Ravine were evicted in 1959. Dodgers Stadium opened in 1962. LA's Latino community would never forget. The bitterness and uh, kind of the mythic lore of this notion that the Dodgers uh, kicked out all the poor people uh, to build a stadium. It's not exactly the timeline that we spent a lot of time unpacking carefully. It was a housing plan for the poor, well-intentioned, but mired in suspicion and a hundred million dollars from the feds. Usually when a city is expanding and, and things like eminent domain are used, it's, it's, it's usually 99.9% .9 of the time, poor people are going to pay. So that bitterness is easily overlaid and transferred, you know, over to the Dodgers, fair or unfair. When you met some of the old timers back in the middle 60s that were from the Alpine area, Chinatown area, 
They all had a grudge against the Dodgers because they still remembered the fact that they got moved out of their houses, promised better housing, and it never developed, it never materialized. Oh, you know, O'Malley's bringing the Dodgers to LA. So we thought basically they were gonna rebuild or, you know, uh, revamp the Wrigley Field spot. Eventually, we got wind that they were going to, it, it was a shady move. Really, you know, it's a deal done in a back room somewhere. The Dodgers uh, came across as big robber barons. They took over this land, and the stories of, of families being pushed out of their homes, a lot of bad stuff kept coming up. And my dad was a heavy equipment operator for the Department of Water and Power. And so one of his assignments, uh, after they cleared it out, was to put in the drainage and sewer systems. My dad was really reluctant, you know, because we had family there, and, and it really, uh, it did not set well with him and uh, his crew as well. They were gonna refuse to work on the project. And my dad's foreman told him, don't do that because you could eventually end up losing your job. How much sick time do you have? And so my dad, you know, he had accrued a lot of hours of sick time. So that's what they did. They got about eight months worth of uh, time off. The project went on and they knew that. And uh, within eight months, my dad was reassigned to do the uh, Pomona Freeway drainage and sewer system. To me, it was, it was just a, a, a big black eye uh, uh, society. And it, was, it, it caused a lot of pain. Because of that, you know, a lot of the Mexican Americans, they, bought, they, they said, hey, forget the Dodgers, we're done. We're done with them. You know, we don't care if there's Koufax and Drysdale, and Maury Wills, Duke Snyder, we don't care. You know, we're, we're not gonna go. We're, we're never gonna step a, a foot in, in the new stadium. You know, there, it was a lot of pain, and, and there still is to this day. For some, there will never be a return. For others, Again, the beating heart of Fernando Valenzuela brings many into the stadium and into the fold for the first time. The Dodgers are known for the Koufax Jewish heart and they're known for the Jackie African-American heart. We, we were never really a part of that picture until, until Fernando.